On behalf of the Ber uh, Bernardelli family and uh, our staff in Grissimbon, I'd like uh, to take this occasion to thank you all for joining us today here. It is nice finally to be able to see, you know, to see in person and not through a screen, you know. Thank you very much to Minister Fedeli. Thank you very much, uh, MPP Boma. <clears throat> For many of you, you know who Grissimbon is and uh, what is the, their history. For who don't know, let me say just a couple of words just to let you know what we are doing and why we are here today. Grissimbon is a family-owned company that started in Italy in 1969 by Mr. Nevino Bernardelli. Uh, they start in a small region, a small vi little village in, uh, in the north side of Italy, in uh, Emilia Romagna. <clears throat> Our parents' company, Grissimbon SPA, has four facilities in Italy and one here in North America. Basically, this one is the only facility that we have outside the Italian territory. So they are very proud of it. <clears throat> Grissimbon started here in the 2014, middle 2014 as a construction, and in beginning 2015, the first product start to, to come out. Obviously, many things change since that time, and the business here in North America, North America continue to grow. We are thankful for our customers, key partnership and relationship that continue to allow us to grow and to invest here in this community. Today we stand here in this beautiful, massive uh, new expansion with uh, we call phase two, that uh, without a doubt uh, has had its fair share of challenge. Thank you to our common friends, COVID-19. The pandemic put the entire team to the test, and I'm delighted with the commitment from our team, project partners, and the city officials for supporting us from start to finish. Thank you to Nathan of Lanka Construction for your service and your team dedication. Thank you to all personnel at the city of Brentford. Where are they? City of Brentford, yeah. <laughs> for uh, your support and the commitment to our project, and thank you to all the other trade that they help us to make this one happen. <clears throat> the expansion and the new line that uh, we will see it after, it's important uh, to Grissom Bond globally. The investment in Canada and Brentford from the headquarters in Italy, and especially for the Bernardelli family, this is very significant. Christine Bond's future in Brentford is bright, and the future investment, I shouldn't say yes now, but I can tell you it's already on the horizon. Finally, Christine Bond is honored to contribute and create a new permanent full time position as a result of this expansion, and the opportunity to support and supply the Canadian consumer with the best bakery food, fine food that are made in Canada, and especially here in Brentford. We should be proud of it. Thank you very much for attending to this event. I'm very pleased. And uh, now I believe the Mr. Fedeli would like to say a few words. So we want to say hello to everybody, uh, Derek, uh, to you and the entire team at uh, Grissom Bond. Uh, thank you for hosting us here today. I want to acknowledge uh, Acting Mayor John uh, and uh, all of your city uh, team who are here. Thank you for the work. But it's a, a great privilege to talk about um, my uh, colleague and great friend, Will Boma. I can tell you. Uh, you know, I'm going to make a bit of a joke about you, Bill. You know, he's a big fella, and that comes with a big voice. And believe me, around the caucus table, when Will speaks, you hear that voice. You know, Obama is like booming. And he represents you extremely well. I just want you to know that, that 
his voice is not just loud but thoughtful. When he is at Queen's Park talking about the needs of Brantford and Brant, you know that uh, uh, he's speaking from the heart and speaking genuinely about the concerns and the issues that he brings to Queen's Park. So thank you, Will. I've been an MPP for a long time, a former mayor, and they're rare. Uh, the, the action that you take on behalf of your people and you dig uh, is very rare, and we're proud to have you uh, as a tireless advocate for your community. So it's great to be back in beautiful Brantford. I was saying to Vincent earlier, just being in person, you know, I don't care who's here, you just want to see people. <laughs> it's, I do care who's here, but it's just so nice to actually be out again and, and start seeing and get things going and hearing about the things happening in our economy. And an expansion like this, right in the middle of uh, COVID, all of that work, that extra work that had to be done to get it where it is throughout a pandemic is a real testament to uh, the deterrent the deterrence that, uh, uh, that, that you faced and, and the action that you took, Franco, thank you. So we want to acknowledge all businesses across Ontario uh, who've shown that resilience. And I think Premier Ford calls it best when he says it's the Ontario spirit and nothing showed it better than seeing this beautiful facility that came during the pandemic, so thank you. Since the beginning of the pandemic, uh, Ontario's business community really truly stepped up. Um, they produced PPE, they produced all the products that we needed to get us through, the supply chain worked here in Ontario, but you really did support your communities as well, all the businesses in Ontario. They answered the call at the time that it was needed the most, and that's during COVID-19. But we also understand the toll that this pandemic has taken on families in Ontario. We see it in our communities every single day. And that's why you hear us when we're out, Minister Elliott and all of the uh, uh, government caucus, we are, are making sure that we're protecting the health uh, of Ontario families. That, that came above and beyond everything else. Protecting their health and yes, protecting their jobs and the economy. Today's announcement is a testament to that commitment that the government had and a little bit about our plan for the future. So we're very pleased that Chris and Vaughn is investing $5.9 million to enter into a new segment of the bakery market. This investment will allow Chris and Vaughn to expand its facility, as you can see, purchase new equipment, and add a new production line, which we're very excited to tour in a moment. This tremendous growth will double their food production capacity, expand your product range, from breadsticks to new segments of the bakery. I'm sure Frank will tell you a little bit more as we tour. Uh, this investment also includes support of $900,000 from the province of Ontario, our regional development program. Uh, it's called the Southwestern Development Fund, and that will help create 15 new jobs here at Grissom Baum, and that is just simply fantastic news. I want to switch gears just for a moment and talk about what else um, MPP Bowman and I are doing today. We're also going over to Rembos, a wood products remanufacturer. They're un undertaking a $5.5 million uh, expansion and upgrades with $500,000 from uh, direct support from the province of Ontario, and that's going to increase their production and create eight jobs over at Rembos. Synergy Mold Works is a manufacturer of custom uh, injection molding uh, molds and they're investing $3.5 million to expand their facility, purchase new equipment, and increase their research and development. And we are providing $500,000 from the Southwestern Development Fund, and that will create five new jobs over at Synergy. And Elastochem Specialty Chemicals. This is a sprayed polyurethane, polyurethane foam manufacturer, and they're investing an impressive $10 million to produce low, non-combustible, and energy-efficient insulation board. And uh, the province is providing $500,000 towards their expansion that will create 10 new jobs. So altogether, these critical businesses in this region are investing $25 million in the middle of COVID. Uh, and this will create uh, new jobs, retain the jobs that they have, all local manufacturers. They're gonna strengthen our domestic manufacturing uh, and they're going to attract investment right here in Brantford. So we've got, of that 25 million, there's $2.4 million in support 
that are uh, it, that's coming from the Southwestern Development Fund, creating 38 jobs and retaining their local jobs. So I think it's great news, strengthening the regional economy, promotes economic growth. And I do want to say again, Franco, Derek, and the team, uh, thank you to the team at Grissom Bond. It's Im really impressive to see the commitment to the work that you do. We're looking forward to when you're producing pretzels at the other end uh, to have a sample of what some of those beautiful delicacies are going to be all about. Uh, but in the meantime, you have work, your work cut out for you. You have decided to expand in the middle of this, and we're very, very grateful for the work that you did. It's something that you should be very proud of and a reason to celebrate and to uh, bring the final words. I would ask our, your local MPP and a great friend, Will Boma, to maybe close us off. I want to thank you, Minister, for your leadership on the economic development file. The reason that that's so important to me, especially in our community here, is, is how do we recover from COVID? You know, we, we now see this light at the end of the tunnel. You know, people are getting their vaccinations. We have that supply. And, you know, we've done an incredible job. And I just heard that again this morning about how good of a job that we're doing actually getting those vaccines out so that we can get through this. But we've invested billions and billions and billions of dollars into this province to try to keep the province going through COVID. And how do we recover? And you, Franco, Derek, are part of that. You know, the city of Brantford, Kevin, you're a part of that. Because what we have to do is get the economy firing on all cylinders for a decade in order to make that happen. And what you're seeing here today is the people that have the, the courage to invest in our community, to take that chance and to take that risk in order to grow their business. They're, we're poised for that growth to happen here. And so I want to thank Grissenbahn for investing in our community. And, you know, it, it, the, the most incredible part about this job is the people that you meet. And I can remember sitting down with Derek when this was just a dream. It was an idea, a possibility of filling a gap in the market. And here we are today. And so to Minister, thank you for having a responsive program that can make that investment into our, our community, to make these dreams a reality, so that as a group we can recover. Thank you, Kevin, at the city. And to the City Council, John, thank you for being here. Because we need a community that's welcoming and open, in, open to business to make these things happen. And we show that here in our community. And you've seen that too. We do have a long way to go. Thank you, Minister. But, but to be able to see a project go from concept and to be able to shepherd that through to co conclusion is just such an extreme pleasure to be a part of. You are here for us and we are here for you. And I'd like to thank everyone for being here today. And I'm going to ask uh, Councillor Utley, the uh, standing in mayor, while the mayor is taking a well-earned break, to come up and say a few words also. Thanks, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Franco and Derek for your kind invitation. The warm welcome at the reception desk was, uh, was very much appreciated. Um, uh, Minister Fidelli, it's great to have you back in our community again. Keep coming back. Uh, with checks in your pocket, I hope. So uh, it's always uh, well received. Um, MPP Will uh, Balmer, uh, my friend, uh, friends and, and guests. Uh, it's my pleasure to bring greetings on behalf of Mayor Davis, who's up in the Yukon right now, um, just uh, relaxing and, and getting ready for the challenges ahead. And uh, it's my pleasure to bring greetings on behalf of him and all the members of, of City Council. Um, I um, like to thank Grissom Bond for investing in our community, selecting our community uh, for many reasons. Uh, one is proximity to, to your uh, major customer, um, but also uh, we have a community that um, has strong post-secondary uh, programs to train skilled people. And if there's a challenge in our community and other communities in our province and country, it's a shortage of skilled people. And you can't do your work unless you've got uh, bums in saddles, you know, to, to perform the job. Um, the technicians, the frontline people, the, um, you know, great people like Sean over there. Uh, I want to embarrass uh, Sean. We work, work together at Westcast, and you've got a great employee in, uh, in Sean. Um, so I, I, um, I think it's um, wonderful that 
you know, being able to expand your operation. I hope that continues with, with your success. Um, I um, like to thank uh, Nathan as well. We'll go back uh, a few years and our own staff in Kevin Finney and Bob Ham. Thank you for all you do. And of course, our friends from, from the media. So in, in, uh, in closing, uh, we wish you continued success and especially good health to, to everyone. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. So what are we doing here in Brantford today? Today we're here uh, in Brantford, Brant, uh, at several companies, but we're at the moment at Grissenbaum, where they're investing $5.9 million in a new facility. The province of Ontario, through the Regional Development Program, is, in, is uh, uh, investing $900,000 into this business. They're going to add 15 people on top of the over 30 that they already have, and they're going to make pretzels here in Ontario, the uh, very first company in Ontario to be doing that. So why is the province investing into the Brantford Brant area specifically? Well, we've got a program that's uh, designed to help uh, these small and medium manufacturers uh, stay in Ontario, grow in Ontario, bring jobs, bring revenue for the province, provide jobs for families. Uh, MPP Will Boma made a very strong case about Grissenbaum and others here in Brantford. Uh, and uh, together, all of these four companies are investing $25 million uh, and creating uh, dozens of jobs. As we start to see the province reopening after step three, uh, do we expect any more investment into these areas? Uh, the regional development program that I spoke of is $100 million over four years, so we've got a lot of, uh, of opportunity to continue to invest in this region. Uh, we're seeing huge uptake from the companies. They know that we've lowered the cost of doing business in Ontario by $7 billion a year by reducing WSIB premiums, by reducing their, their uh, hydro uh, bills, by reducing their provincial share of their local taxes. So uh, all of these fundamentals are in place, which is why you're seeing so many businesses investing. So how does it feel to have the minister here in the Brantford Brant area today? It's very exciting to have a minister Fideli down. You know, we have an incredible community that's able to adapt. And we have a company here, Grissom Bond, that's invested in the community. And to be able to shepherd this project through from beginning to end and get them through the application process to the Regional Development Fund and to see that growth happen here. You know, I've, we've, we've seen so many businesses and individuals struggle through COVID. And the key to recovery, to be able to get us back to where we need to be as far as the province goes, is to see businesses like this grow, to have those opportunities for employees, to have those opportunities for businesses. And so to make those relationships and to make those connections and to see those investments made here locally is really, really exciting to me and have that capped off by a visit with Minister Fideli in order to celebrate those investments, I think is very exciting for the community. How are these investments going to impact the, uh, the local area and the workforce? Well, that's a great question. And, you know, Minister Fideli has said that too. We need the employees for these businesses also. But, you know, how do you recover from something as significant as COVID? And when you think of um, post-war, post-World War II, the growth that happened in the 1950s and into the 1960s, that was driven by innovative businesses and manufacturing. And I think what we need in Ontario is the same type of innovative uh, uh, manufacturing expansion in the, in the province so that we can have that same growth. And that's what I'm looking forward to as we recover from COVID-19. Now, of course, it's been a year and a half since we've been under this pandemic weight. Um, will these investments or the future investments that are to come, will these uh, replenish the jobs that were lost during the COVID-19 shutdown with businesses laying off employees and shutting down during this whole time. Are we going to see a bounce back to fully what it was before or is that going to take some time? I think it will take some time. You know, I know the Minister of Finance who I'm working for now in the, in the Ministry of Finance talks about a V-shaped recovery. So we went very quickly down and we have to go very quickly back up. But that means that everything needs to be firing on all cylinders. And um, so, but you see that here. I, and I'm very optimistic. We were well on our way to replenishing those jobs that had been lost in manufacturing, the 350,000 jobs that were lost over the 15 years of the previous government. And the reality is, and as you look around this facility, you know, 
manufacturing is not dead in the province of Ontario. We make such incredible things here, right here in the riding, you know, but in the entire region in Hamilton and Kitchener, Waterloo and Toronto, when you visit some of these sites, it's stunning what is made right here. And, the, you know, the minister's been talking about that today too. The stuff that's made in Ontario, it's just incredible. And to be able to be a part of that and to realize that there are so many incredible jobs for young people and we can get through this and we will get through it together. Amazing. Uh, what would you like to say to your constituents about the uh, investments that are coming into uh, the, the area every day? Absolutely. Um, we see the investments in our community and that's because our community is such an incredible place to invest. You know, we are along the 403 corridor. We have access to all the markets into, into Michigan and into New York and into Quebec and into the western provinces right here. And you see these companies that see that happening here and want to be a part of that. But that's the kind of community that we've been building at the leadership level, both at the county and at the city and Six Nations, so that people want to invest in Brant, they want to invest in Brantford to make those dreams a reality, and so that we can see full employment here in the community. You know, when I threw my hat in the ring to have the honour of representing the people of Brantford, Brant, Six Nations and Mississaugas in the Ontario Legislature, I never and none of us ever in our wildest dreams thought that we would be facing and managing one of the worst viral outbreaks to grip our province, our country and indeed the entire world in our lifetime. I am first to say that there has been difficult decisions that have had to be made. And as we are hopefully exiting this terrible pandemic, there are many, many heroes to be recognized. But today, I am here specifically to publicly acknowledge the Brant County Health Unit for their professionalism, dedication, and tireless work during this pandemic. My staff provides me with a daily snapshot of calls and emails coming into my office. And one day as I was reading this report, I got a no caller ID and it was the Premier of Ontario, Premier Ford, who spoke at length complimenting the Brant County Health Unit for their COVID vaccine rollout. And so I want to thank everyone involved in that because I can tell you that you've been consistently at the top of the province. My office has continuously heard from constituents that compliment the professionalism, organizational capacity, efficiency, and you know what, downright kindness that they experience by the Brant County Health Unit staff. So on behalf of the province of Ontario and my office, I salute and congratulate Dr. Malcolm Locke on his leadership and I have to look back and say also thank you to Dr. Elizabeth Urbanke, who set up the foundational groundwork that led to this announcement today. Even during the height of the pandemic and the uncertainty of vaccine supply from the federal government, the Brant County Health Unit agreed to set up a dedicated liaison to work with our office in order to help mitigate the number of calls in order to and, and help streamline the system. The consistent public accolades were not a one-off, but a near daily occurrence. And as an active duty volunteer firefighter with the County of Brant and Station 7 St. George, we pride ourselves on running towards things that other people are running away from. And to see the Brant County Health Unit staff step up to the plate and be named as one of the top performing health units in the province of Ontario is a testament to this organization and the people that work here. I am pleased to present this certificate of excellence from the province of Ontario to you and to your entire organizations as a token of your community's appreciation in playing a tremendous role in the COVID-19 pandemic mitigation and a world-class vaccine rollout to the people of Brantford Brant. We celebrate and salute your teams. Thank you. It's been really inspiring uh, to watch what our staff has been able to accomplish, both from a vaccine administration and a, a case management perspective. It has been a very busy year and a half for us. I would like to express on behalf of the health unit our appreciation for the recognition for the work and the sacrifices that have occurred over the last 18 months um, in our efforts to serve our community. Our work isn't done yet though, and our, the pandemic is not yet over. So we would continue to urge everyone who is eligible, who has not yet received their vaccine to come to one of our clinics. You can walk into any of our clinics and we'd be happy to uh, help you receive your vaccination. Please do so to protect yourself, your family and our community.